picked up this giant set of tin shears at the flea market. Cost me six dollars. I picked up this shear at the flea market. Cost me six dollars. Problem is, it's extremely rusty. I have managed to make it move by using a wedge to drive the jaws apart, but it really needs to have the rust cleaned off of it. So today I'm going to set up my electrolytic rust removing bath and remove the rust from it. I'm only going to work about this much of it. Uh, the rest of it won't fit in the bucket, but this part I can get to with a uh, wire brush pretty easily and I really need to get the joint so that it opens up and, and cleans out and that's what the electrolytic is going to do for me. First thing I need to do is get a bucket full of water. I picked up this shear at the flea market. It cost me six dollars. Problem is, it's extremely rusty. I have managed to make it move by using a wedge to drive the jaws apart, but it really needs to have the rust cleaned off of it, so today I'm going to set up my electrolytic rust removing bath and remove the rust from it. I really need to get the joint so that it opens up and, and cleans out, and that's what the electrolytic is going to do for me. First thing I need to do is get a bucket full of water. The water is just tap water straight out of the garden hose. The miracle of the thing is when you add baking soda. Some guys use washing soda. Uh, that works. I've tried it. Uh, it's a little more corrosive. Got a, a bit higher pH than baking soda. The caustic action doesn't really help in the process. Uh, the caustic can remove oils and things like that because it will break down the hydrocarbons. But it really doesn't do a whole lot for the electrolytic action. The idea of the electrolysis is that the current flowing through an anode and a cathode causes the iron and oxygen to separate in the rust. The oxygen is drawn off of the steel and what is left is iron powder and carbon. The iron 
is dissolved into the water and forms a real icky brown sludge. There's some question about whether you need a certain amount of voltage, a certain amount of amperage. Voltage drives the current through the water, amperage does the work. This is a 12 volt battery charger. And what's happening in the bucket is you can see bubbles forming. on the shear. Now you want to have the black connection on your battery charger, the negative, connected to the part that you're removing rust from. It's been in the bath about six hours. Tremendous difference. You can see how easily it works. Took a wire brush and scrubbed off the loose stuff. I think we're good to go. It's down to just that black goo. The black goo, I'm told, is the carbon that's left behind when the rust and iron come off of the part. And you can see the steel showing through. It was nice that it was closed while it rusted because that protected the cutting surfaces. These two surfaces were real close together and they didn't rust up hardly at all. Right there you can see a difference in the steel also. The blade itself is hardened steel, but the body of the shears are softer stuff. So the hardened steel blade was welded into the body of the shear. Seems how we had such good success doing the blade in. I'm going to put the handles in and let them boil out for a while. Shouldn't take as long because the blades, the blade end, I was trying to remove the rust in between the joint and inside that rivet so it took a little longer for it to work in from the edges but I think we've got a success here guys it's been in the bath about six hours tremendous difference you can see how easily it works Took a wire brush and scrubbed off the loose stuff. I think we're good to go. It's down to just that black goo. The black goo, I'm told, is the carbon that's left behind when the rust and iron come off of the part.
and you can see the steel showing through. It was nice that it was closed while it rusted because that protected the cutting surfaces. These two surfaces were real close together and they didn't rust up hardly at all. Right there you can see a difference in the steel also. The blade itself is hardened steel, but the body of the shears are softer stuff. So the hardened steel blade was welded into the body of the shear. Seems how we had such good success doing the blade in. I'm going to put the handles in and let them boil out for a while. Shouldn't take as long because the blades, the blade end, I was trying to remove the rust in between the joint and inside that rivet so it took a little longer for it to work in from the edges but I think we've got a success here guys I think I'll leave this set for overnight and we'll find out what it looks like in the morning All the gunk's coming right off of it, even the paint. The only thing left on the shear after the rust remover has done its job is a thin layer of black soot. The carbon left after the steel has been dissolved into its components. Uh, the oxygen bonds with the iron, forms iron oxide, and leaves the carbon behind. When I strip away the rust, the iron oxide, all that's left is the carbon dust. So that's what the black film is on the part. The shear end of the shears has been stripped already. All that's left on that is a little bit of flash rust. It's chemically clean after it comes out of the electrolysis tank. That makes it so that the iron and steel flashes rust almost immediately after it dries. After I get it completely rust removed, I'm going to wipe it down with some mineral spirits. And that should clean up that loose dust on there. And then uh, oil it down. I should be all set.